All right, hi everyone. Thanks for joining our workshop. In our hour together, we're going to be looking at ways that co-design might be used to tackle complex social issues like gender inequity. But before we get started, I'm Hannah Korsmeyer, and Ali and I are both design researchers in the um, depart uh, design department at Monash University. Our work is based across two different research labs. One is XYX Lab, which investigates gender and cities, and Wonder Lab, which researches co-design and learning. And in this work, the way we kind of combine those two different research labs is to run many, many workshops and with diverse stakeholders. And in this work, we can see how co-design is a really powerful process for creating social change. And we really are interested in its unique potential to shift the way that we engage with complex and often politically fraught topics like gender. And I'm Ali Edwards. My master's research was about the value of play. And I saw how social and emotional factors could influence people's cognitive ability to problem solve and their willingness to collaborate and take creative risks. So this more participant-centered approach informs how Hannah and myself design and facilitate workshops. My current PhD research is about how the materials that we use in workshops, what Liz Sanders would refer to as co-design tools, actually have a more agential role than designers sometimes realize. Which brings us to what we're doing together today. Um, some context, more and more we see co-design being applied in the public sector, whether it be to address issues of gender-based violence or to better design public spaces to be safer and more inclusive for diverse communities. And I'm sure everyone listening already knows that improving gender equity in cities is a really complex problem and creating change requires commitment from a wide variety of stakeholders and organizations. So as with many co-design projects, these stakeholders will hold uh, contrasting ideas about how to frame the problem, or they may even have conflicting ideologies about how best to move forward. So stakeholders working in fields outside of design too will have a variety of expectations about what this co-design process can even achieve, what it would be used for. So before we move on, we wanna know what you think it could achieve. So please pause the video and write down your first reaction to this question how can co-design make a difference for gender inequity in cities? So go ahead, pause the video. We'll be right here when you come back. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. So many of you might have written something to the effect of responding to issues to design solutions from diverse perspectives towards viable, implementable solutions. Maybe you wrote something about how it could democratize decision-making processes and you can decenter this idea of like a default male user. Or you might have written about how people would be able to collectively speculate what alternative configurations could look like, or some combination of all these. Now, all three of these frames are useful in tackling gender inequity because as particularly related to issues of safety or gender-based violence, there's both an urgent need to mobilize stakeholders to take immediate action as well as an overarching need to address the systemic issues that drive and perpetuate this inequity. Right, so whether or not any of us actually follow a process that resembles anything that looks like a double diamond is a topic for another workshop, but this tension and movement between exploration of possibilities and details of concrete application is a fundamental skill of design practice. It's right within our comfort zone to toggle between these two ways of conceptualizing ideas. However, stakeholders arriving at a workshop event, whether they are policymakers, engineers, activists, community members, they may all have different reasons for participating. And not everyone is going to be interested in speculation. Not everyone will be satisfied uh, to discuss what might be perceived as short-term solutions or stepping stones. So it's always a challenge to balance conflicting agendas and priorities. However, in dealing with gender inequity, it's even more fraught as unconscious biases and deeply held beliefs can really create conflict in these spaces. Underlying assumptions about what gender equity is, what gender equity is, or what problems are represented to be may or may not be recognized even on a personal level, yet these ideas are guiding everyone's contributions to the co-design process. In this workshop, we'll be experimenting with how different problem frames and expectations about the actions that need to be taken can actually influence the co-design process. More specifically, we'll be experimenting with what happens when diverse problem frames are used in parallel activities during the same event. This helps give a bit more autonomy and choice over how you initially frame the problem, while still benefiting from having exposure to multiple forms of design engagement during this workshop. 
So working in these parallel ways seems to be an efficient way to reveal underlying problem frames so that they may become more explicit before they're entangled and reassembled through the co-design process. Shortly, we're going to be getting into groups that uh, each have a set of bespoke tools and different problem frames, and together we'll use the, use the tools to respond to a prompt and then come back together to see how a discussion of the different frames might extend, deepen, or develop our own thinking about the issue of gender inequity and how co-design can contribute. Thanks very much. Looking forward to it. See you soon. See you soon.